Hello, Crystal Palace, and welcome to the Upper Norwood Library Hub's Library Lunch. My name is Galena Rin. I am streaming to you live and direct from our new studio space in the bowels of the library. You can come here. You can hire the studio. You can use our cameras. You, it's a recording studio as well, so if you want to record your poetry slam album to drum bass whatever you like it's all here to play for just come on down to the library hit us up on my email at galena.rin at unlt.org and um, we have a green screen which currently uh, a green screen wall which is currently orange for me um, and multiple green screens which can be used in any of the rooms throughout the building um, a lovely man called Dan has um, d- uh, has come over and, and donated another green screen and a ton of lights to us so thank you very much Dan for that. Um, If you're sitting at home with any technology that still works and could possibly be used by the library in a live stream recording environment then feel free to donate it. Um, Maybe perhaps some instruments as well. We may have some music teachers come in and taking over our spaces very very soon. Um, Anyway we have a lovely guest for you today. Her name is Hannah Jane Fox and she is a singer and a writer. Hello Hannah how you doing? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am very well, thank you very much. Um, So tell the folks of Crystal Palace who you are and what it is you do. Um, So I'm Hannah and I've been a West End and television actress for many years, (laughs) lots and lots of years. Um, I'm probably best known for being the original Scaramouche in We Will Rock You in the London uh, production at the Dominion Theatre where I played that role for four years. Um, and I also play Sharon, uh, the mum, in Million Between on CBBC. So if you've got children between, well, now I suppose they replay it, but between five and um, 13, you're probably mm-hmm. sick of the sight of me. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> is there, do you find there's much difference between working in the kids' shows and the adult shows? Um, no, it's probably slightly harder work in the children's shows um you've always got one eye on sort of your responsibilities i suppose as a storyteller um and for something like millie the delivery of the language is probably in some ways more difficult um not not at all that it's like pantomime but it's it's treating the dialogue with the same um respect as if you were doing some really sort of dark drama on you know itv Mm -hmm. Um, but but understanding that that audience is as as viable as the the grown up audience, so um, yeah, and the hours are the same. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so we actually have a project here at the library called Croydon Live, which um, is new. It's a it's an Arts Council funded project and it's for children's theatre production people. So we, we're going to employ actors and basically if someone's got some writing to do and things like that, um, then they have to be based from Croydon and we've got some money to pay them and we're looking for people to sign up and things. So um, do you write, I'm so I'm kind of going to push us in that kind of direction of, uh, of discussion. Do you write for children's? Um, theater, uh, um, no, so I have been writing, I am a writer, and I've been writing uh, a number of things for quite a long time now. And so I've been working on two things. Um, one is a new musical version of a very, very famous book uh, by Faye Weldon, The Lives and Loves of a She Devil, which was a huge book. And uh, with Faye's permission, she loves what we've been doing. We've been, myself, Nigel Planer, uh, you might remember from The Young Ones, mm-hmm. Neil. Um, very famous actor writer and uh, a composer called Andrew Holdsworth, Andrew Holdsworth um, from Tooting. We have been composing and writing the musical version of that for about seven years. So that was a huge body of work, mm. two and a half hours of original music. Um, we also set the story today, so not in the 80s. Our Ruth is, um, is born and bred now. So I've been writing that and composing that. I've also been writing uh, a number of projects for children. Um, which have come very, very close, um, very close to Netflix. In fact, I was asked to write an American version, but I've been writing uh, something for children to do with politics, actually. And I don't know very much about politics. So one way, if you're going to try and teach children about politics, is to come at it from the same angle. So I bought lots of books on children and politics, how to describe politics to children. And along the way, I've learned so much when, I mean, 
the most fun thing about writing for me is research. You can waste a few hours researching when you should be writing as well. You can sort of go, oh, I'm, I'm very busy. I've done six hours mm. of research, otherwise known as sort of just Googling. Um, but certainly researching for children is really interesting because you come at things in a different way. And I also uh, was part of National Youth Music Theatre, um, NYMT, which I know a lot of, you know, very famous actors and actresses. We all talk about how important it was to be part of that as a young person. So I was able to do, for instance, I did a lot of amateur dramatics when I was from seven onwards. So this is when things like, you know, Horns the Opera Dramatic, Finch the Opera, Opera Dramatic, there was always some company that you could join. And I learned so much in those companies. And then of course I went to drama school at the weekends. I was lucky enough to, to do that and be part of all those things. And then uh, I think I was 16 when I auditioned for the NYMT. Um, it's, it's really important. And they, they write for children or young people, you know, and you, it's really important that children get exposed to good writing like that. Yeah, so what, yeah, that, they actually just answered a question of mine. It's like, where do you start with kids? with kids um, programming. Um, is there any um, good subjects you think we should look out for when, um, I mean, I don't have children, children, so I don't I don't really know, but I guess politics I, is a I good one. I would say politics yeah. And, yeah. and mental health. I mean, politics is all around us at the moment and children probably see it as the shouty angry man or the, the, the shouty angry woman or the man from America with the orange face and Boris Johnson says stay home. And they don't really have any way of sort of understanding that concept other than their parents' viewpoints, which is where we learn most of our politics. And they don't think it really affects them. And so when something like the free school meals debate comes along, this sort of makes them think, oh, wait, yeah, well, what do you mean? Someone pays for that? Who pays for that? Who votes for that? It's, it's introducing children to democracy a lot younger than they get taught currently. I don't think we even touch on politics in school. I don't know until we get to sixth form. Um, so things like that. And... And, and mental health and a sense of um, well, the arts in general, really, and how important they are. Mm -hmm. So subjects that kind of tell you that there is a way um, to live an artistic life, however hard, <laughs> it's particularly hard now, but however hard it is, it's worthwhile. Yeah, I think there's a there's a the, the schools have started to like teach creative thinking, not because they want artists, but because they want create creative decision makers and yeah. out, blue sky thinking or out of the box or whatever kind of management speak yes. they have going on. Um, yeah. is that something? I mean, so yeah, I guess there's an awful lot of the arts are just um based now for business purposes rather than actual art sake, right? Yeah, then you also have the other side, which is when I. I mean, I've done lots and lots of musicals in the West End and I, singing was my main focus for a long time. Um, but I wanted to sing an act since I can remember and it meant a lot to me. And it, I didn't say, well, when I grow up, I really want to be famous. I knew that fame might come as a byproduct of what I wanted to do, but what I really wanted to do was do that thing that I did. And I was like, I went on this stage and it was Hornsey Town Hall. Um, I thought, I want to do this again and again and again. I like it. And now I guess talent and singing and theatricalness has so much to do with X Factor and being famous and money and the trappings that go with it. It must be hard for the kids to distinguish the, the kids like who are like me, who, you know, wanted what I wanted, to distinguish themselves a bit from the people who just kind of everybody wants to be a TikTok star so yeah I think there's a there's an idea it was kind of started with my generation you know with the beginnings of, of idol and and all those singing things that either you were talented or you're not you know it's not it's, yeah it's like that's an, not right because I w was a great singer when I was doing MYMT but when I turned up at um, Mountview for my three-year drama uh, course they were like oh you're doing some really bad things to your voice there that, that's not going to be sustainable that's not going to serve you, you know. And, and often, like, you'd have a really boring voice class. Like, you're just doing a dip song or you're just going mm. for now. You think, God, this is just so boring. And then you get to your seventh show of the week in a rock show um, in the West End. You go, oh, I know what I need. I need a dip song or I need, a, I need to move my mouth like that. I need the training that I had specific, specifically for 
musical theatre. Um, I know lots of actors who didn't go to drama school and that's uh, equally a, a brilliant choice or, or direction, but certainly with musical theatre and singing like that, um, you'll need that basis. So, you know, we often hear of people like uh, even Adele or, you know, that they, or Sam Fender recently, I quite like Sam Fender, did a load of shows and then is explaining to his fans on Instagram, guys, I've, I've, I've got to be on voice rest, which probably seems quite alien to like yeah. people, but you're like, well, of course you have. You sang like every night last week and that's exhausting and that muscle is going to need resting. Um, and you end up with a, you know, I've had a photograph of my vocal cords. Um, yeah, I've had that as well. It was an endoscope, the endoscope that they put down your throat. It goes up your nose, nose yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was singing, I was doing We Will Rock You and um, each night I would get to this certain song and I would sing a note and I thought, oh, I think I can hear two notes on that note. Every time I sing that note, there's two notes and I thought this, this sort of can't be good. I don't know, like there was steroids involved and talks of operations, but none, none, none of which happened and it, it repaired really well but a lot of water and a lot of rest but yeah those are the sort of boring things that you probably aren't thinking about when you um get to Simon Cow's house <laughs> if you get to Simon Cow's house yeah I think between between the twi TikTok generation the Simon Cowell generation and then sometimes you just hit a bad teacher you know if you've got that combination it's the perfect storm for just never getting anywhere I think like I yeah. had a singing <laughs> I went I did like performance you know like a performance thing after high school and a singing tutor came into uh, our class and did like uh, you know a uh, test out whether you want to be in a want to be in a singing class and she told me that no one would ever teach me singing because I had my lips pierced I had a lip ring back then I was like I don't know in 19 18 or 19 and she said nobody no, would teach you no singing teacher would ever teach me because I had a ring in my mouth and I was, of course, a kid and I was like, I'm not taking it out for nobody, you know, <laughs> like an idiot. But then she was an idiot. Like, who did that? Well, there you, you know? go. Yeah. You know. Actually, I don't have any. My ears aren't even pissed. Yeah, but you, well, see, <laughs> see, <laughs> you. not any difference, is it? No, it doesn't. But you are the alternative now. Everyone's got something hanging out of themselves <laughs> somewhere, right? And now yeah. you're the alternative. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> unusual now. Yeah, actually, I did get the top pierced, but it, it didn't do very well. I went first in. Was the needle up there? I haven't done the, the lobes. Well, no. you know, you went for a hard one to start with, and you also yeah. went for an area that doesn't heal particularly well on most people. Right. You know, it's always also, a Also, I have to kind of keep some things. It's funny, as at my age at this time, work-wise, I do a lot of commercials, and I do, I guess, the same face in most of them, and I'm mum. And so... You know, they're quite certainly at the moment they're most of the work castings that have come back are, you know, back to my commercial casting mum. And you don't want to step too far outside of the box. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's ooh, definitely mom. a place for alternative models. There's definitely like I've had some friends who you would not think are models at all and they get it approached and like, oh, do you want to be in what this like a there's a modeling agency called Alternative Faces or something like that. And it's <laughs> yeah. just you know, but if you if you people. hear one called Tired Mum, I I'm <laughs> I yeah. I'll send my portfolio. <laughs> so we've been talking to a lot of like uh, directors and, and agents as well as actors and writers and things. Um, and they're talking about the new way that people are asking for um, audition tips and stuff like that. Are, have you dealt much with audition tips since we've been in this whole world mm -hmm. scenario? Yeah. I mean, self tapes were sort of becoming more prevalent before um before all this happened, but I've certainly done some, you have to get better at that sort of equipment. I've done a few in town as well, actually turned up and you've got your mask on right until you get in the door. Then you take it off and you do something and put it back on. And you know, you, the way you use your face, particularly in commercials is really key. They're very small, minute things that you do you practice before you go in. And uh, that kind of played a bit havoc with it. But in some ways, if you do get the self tape, you know, at least you've got an opportunity to sort of like, if you've got the time of the day, you can kind of go over it and hone it. But what you can do is start getting a bit obsessive because you go record, record, record. And then suddenly you look and you've got like 32 versions of it on your phone, which it's no you, good. Have to, you, know, you try and bore your husband and say, which one's better? And then he's like, they look exactly the same. But to you, you're like, this one might get me the job, but this one might not, you know, just... <laughs> And it's like, oh, God. Yeah. Um, but we've been working in different ways. I mean, for instance, we've been writing um, 
she level the musical for a long time and it involves us all going to the same room you know trains tubes buses and then recently we've gone oh let's just all do it by zoom because we have resumed working on the show again um and one of the things that we're doing is writing it for a smaller cast and that's giving us an opportunity to sort of re-examine the work anyway actually um so it's had a bit of a rebirth but uh but for anybody who's had a, who had a long project going on, it's been quite a painful process. Um, and for everybody, my, my, my husband's a sound engineer. He normally sort of tours the world. Um, so he's back. So, and, and I guess most of my, you know, favourite people and acquaintances have all lost their jobs. Yeah. All lost their jobs. Yeah. So many people that I care about, you know, are going, mm, no, all my work's gone for the year. So, um, but... I have managed to be really creative during this time, which uh, I feel really pleased about. I didn't kind of go, you know, I've actually found great solace in creating and writing. You just have to switch the voices off that say, oh, what's the point? What's the point? We're never going to put a play on again. We're never going to write, you know, there is always a point to it. And you have to do that even before, I think, this time, you know, as a writer, you've got to keep your um, faith as a creative anyway. Um, but yeah, it's it's a sad time in, in lots of ways for that. Yeah. Um, I was talking about this with one of the agents that, um, I, I don't know if you know, the Japanese Olympics. I use this as an example. Oh, so, my husband should have been there this summer. That's what he, one of the oh, jobs really? he okay. would have been there doing, yeah. So the Japanese Olympics obviously got given the Olympics in its form. And it's always been every country has to kind of outdo the last country to impress and all that kind of stuff. So now that they've put it off for a year, they're looking at every angle of what makes up the Olympics and basically how they can cut money out without yeah. basically rethinking the whole thing like you've done with yours. So for an example, um, the officials are not going to get the same number of TV channels in their hotel room, which cuts down a serious amount of money and has no effect on the sport. So... We were just thinking, like, what are the the remnants that are going to go into theatre after this period? Because everyone's got that time to think about it. And as you say, you're looking at a smaller cast, I guess. And uh, I would like a, a smaller cast, but then better wages, maybe. You know, like what? what because what worries me is everyone will say, "Well, we're all so desperate to do these things. We'll just like go in and do it for nothing." It might be a time to examine. You're right. Where you cut those costs from? But I certainly wouldn't like to see it happen to like, say the ensemble, for instance, because I, I found a wage slip from when I was in the West End. I think I was 21. I was doing the original uh, production of Rent with the Broadway cast and I was uh, a swing. So that week I'd been on for the ensemble and I'd done a cover, I think, of Maureen. And I'm pretty sure that wage is the same wage that most of the ensemble last year. Not much different. Oh, it hasn't, get it, it hasn't you know? changed. <laughs> What worries me is that they might um, go back in at a lower level than that even. And that's just not viable or possible for people to live on. To actually go, well, we've got to pay these people this. And then where else can we cut from? Yeah, it's, if you look at it as a creative opportunity, it's great. But if we look at it solely as a, cut, a cost cutting exercise, that won't be a good thing. No, but that's ultimately what will happen, isn't it? Because there'll be an influx of um, people wanting to go get the job. There'll be an influx of workers to the artistic output and therefore mm -hmm. they'll, they'll drop the wages. I mean, that ultimately has yeah. to happen because the, there'll be a lot of people. Um, and I think people will move, like people will take this time to move if they weren't so if they weren't really passionate about it in the first place, they'll move on to something else. They'll move. You, so, yeah, it, so exactly. you might you know, end we, up... We've all done the Googling, what uh, train to be a uh, acupuncturist. <laughs> Actually, I, this is what I've done my whole life. Um, and yeah, I just, just going to stick it out, you know. Um, I do worry that we're just going to get a whole load of uh, safe stories, like, We'll just put on the same big musicals for the next 10 years going, oh, well, we all want to see that. Um, I think, we, you know, it would be a shame if nobody invests in new things. I'm not just saying that because I've written a new thing, but, you know, we will need different feelings and we'll need some nostalgia, but we'll need some different feelings and projects. 
Um, but it is interesting how creative people get. I had a really good meeting this week with um, with a new director and a choreographer and my writing partners. Um, and it was really exciting. Not only it was really an hour of really creative work. And we left thinking, well, I wonder when that will happen. Is that going to be next year? We don't know. But, you know, it was enough to think that it might be happening. We might be in a room next year somewhere talking yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. I, not, I've never thought about it, but uh, you must be right that the bigger theatres will ultimately just go with what they know is a crowd pleaser, especially to start off with, because they'll be in a deficit, won't they? And they'll just need yeah, to make course. up for the pantomime and things like that. Well, I do so much pantomime. I mean, you know, I had a great year last year before last. I actually won Best Female Villain in the Pantomime Awards, which is really quite a fun event actually that must be and, the best um, thing to want I ever. did the longest running panto in the country I think in anywhere is the Stevenage panto at the Gordon Craig Theatre and it's such a nice place to work and they have a kind of permanent crew and I I hate thinking about all those people not having any work at the moment it's such a great bunch of people and it's such a good pantomime and and it's such great work for people and I'm a great believer in how important pantomime is. You know, as corny as it sounds, it is the first time a lot of kids go to the theatre. Sometimes it's the only time those children go to the theatre. But as a place, there's so many other things going on during that time. Tea dances and, you know, lots of those hubs that theatres are. Um, yeah, it's strange. Christmas without a panto is... I mean, there's a very few going on, I think, isn't there, in the country? Some small yeah. amounts, but... Yeah, we I went to an amateur. We were taken to an amateur dramatics um, theater just down the road from where we lived as kids, and that's you know my uncle was in the probably in the cast the first couple of years, and then um, you just went every year and you sat there with your ice cream and your yeah, bag of sweets. I, I used to get out, so when I did my first professional one. I think I might have been thirteen. I used to get sort of every other day off school, and then I did the principal boy, and then I did the fairy, and then I did the wicked one, and you know it's it's a big part of my life really fun and it's really good fun i mean we're gonna we're missing out on halloween <laughs> bonfire and i i mean we love halloween in our house more than christmas i think the dressing up and well, certainly my kids do yeah, well, yeah. We, we have a show for halloween that i can and i can i just push to you as well oh, um great. daniel you know it's daniel stockton don't you that's that he i mean he gave us yes. your number um yes. he's doing a halloween spooktacular where we're putting all the west end singers in front of a green screen and uh we're doing lots of animated stuff around them and they're right. just going to sing lots of stuff from all the good halloween jobby songs I, I, it's gone in my head what the songs are <laughs> but they're there and they're really good uh, so that's six o'clock on the 31st of, de, of october and it's free on our youtube it's on our facebook and it'll be on our youtube channel and it'll just be everywhere and it'll be lovely it'll be lovely um so what else have you got going on in this period um so you've got some you've got writing sorry you were you wrote well yeah um, i'm writing an, uh, quite a lot of projects for television um I've just started working with another writer um, on a very exciting project. Um, my uh, obviously, my husband's got his first job since March. Um, he's going off to Abu Dhabi to do sound there, so um, uh, I'll be here trying to juggle kids, um, you know, for the next five weeks. Um, but that's pretty much what I'm doing is just throwing everything into. Uh, into this project and into all new products really um and hoping to workshop um another workshop of the musical next year we right before lockdown we were about to do the beam event um which is uh, a sort of a, kind of like a competition with all the newest musical theater writers across the country and we sort of made it into the sort of final so that would have been a very exciting time i'm really hoping that that maybe might happen again next year um I think I'm just gonna lie low till spring, and uh, that seems like a good see idea. That feels like a good idea. Um, so we have a, I have a band project, and we're basically just not even talking about playing gigs at all. We're just gonna put everything into live streaming and try and do as impressive a show, a live stream show as possible, because we can afford the the tech, the production to do something good on a live stream that we'll never be able to afford on a on a stage, you know. Well, this is it. We have also, I mean, I am also writing um, 
I am writing the television Netflix sort of version of our, of our show. And I'm really enjoying that process. Um, and if all else fails, I will put that work into, into television because that's kind of where it's definitely, <laughs> there's going to be work. Yeah. We're never going to, you know, stop being as hungry for television as we are. So um, that's an exciting prospect, actually. Um, and I think um, you kind of need this time to accept what happened. There was like shock, you know, and now as you go through the acceptance, there's, there's space to go and do some more fun projects. So I've got a few things that maybe it's time just to share with people. Um, I've never been very good at that. The whole sort of like putting a story on Instagram and being mm. a bit, I, I don't mind if I've got a, if I'm a character, I've got no sense of self-awareness at all. I could literally be on stage and, and look like a bog, but I've not been very comfortable with being myself. Um, but now you think, you know what, maybe I should just do it. I've got lots of little kind of cameo things that I could be putting out there. Mm, maybe it's time. I know. I think being yourself oh, completely is overrated on social media. I mean, like I, I live, I live a little character. This little character that I have now, it's all just a. Uh, that's what goes out, and that's what people see, and and that and that's it basically. So I wouldn't worry about having to compete with everyone else who does who shares. Because there was that moment food. when everyone was putting out loads of stuff, yeah. and you were a bit like, "Should I? No, nah. should I do it?" And I was like, "No, no, I'm not." <laughs> <laughs> No. no just share what you want you know you don't people don't need to know well, this everything is it. you know when you've been working on something for like seven years as well I was a bit like oh there's this one thing I really want to share and this whole two and a half hours encapsulates everything I want to share anyway that's what I've been writing um and so as we go to the new projects I'm taking those same things that I want to talk about and for me they're very are much um age related as a, as a 44 year old woman um I feel like there's a gap maybe in, in my ear, in my voice. There's quite a lot of stuff on television um, for that sort of pre-mum age or talking about having babies or got really young kids or I don't know, but there's just this other gap I'm quite interested in between like 44 and death, you know, like there's, some other there's a time talking. between that. Amazing. <laughs> to talk about. And, uh, and where I live, I live in, um, I lived in London my whole life. I grew up in London. I lived in Ireland for a small time when I was young. Um, and um, I live in Essex now. And it's a whole new place uh, that I'd like to explore and talk about as well. So, yeah. Amazing. There's lots, there's lots of things to do. Lots of things to do. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go out and uh, have a good time. Amazing. Well, thank you, Hannah, for joining us. It's been My really pleasure. nice to talk to you about all those weird, weird, wonderful subjects I didn't know we were going to get to. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, goodbye. Right. <laughs> uh, so Good luck with your album, your music. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, I'm just going to go over some notifications that we've got going um, up the, the library here. So Croydon Live is a project that we're doing with LJA Productions. It's, it's an Arts Council funded project and we are looking for writers, actors, all sorts who are based in the borough of Croydon and create content or entertainment for children. That's pretty wide. I mean, if you've got anything that even fits in that bubble, you need to be hitting us up now. The link is in the chat and I'm just putting it um, in the chat. It's also in the description and on our website, uppernorwoodlibraryhub.org. And the last thing I have to push for you today is the Halloween show, which is at six o'clock on 31st of October. That's this Saturday night. There's all sorts of folks coming from the West End. We're going to put them in front of an animated green screen and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's free to watch. Um, we would like donations because we do pay our artists. So, you know, you know me, I'm always asking you guys for money. So it's fine. It's fine. It's just to keep the library open and the arts pumping out of our doors windows i don't know where the arts are coming from but we're trying we're trying our best well thank you hannah once again for joining us it has been That's lovely and uh, and we'll see all of you guys tomorrow when we're back with the director of um disentangled projects norman murray who's going to be talking to us about the Cr uh, the croydon emerging writers course that's going on down in stanley halls all right folks we'll see you all later thank you very much bye. for joining us bye bye